He knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. Robert Oppenheimer's secret city known as Los Alamos stand as an enduring testament to human ingenuity and innovation. During World War II, as part of the Manhattan Project, this hidden town played a pivotal role in the development of the atomic bomb. The secretive nature of the Manhattan Project influenced not only the city's physical layout, but also the routines and experiences. Beyond its historical significance, the architectural aspects of Los Alamos shed light onto the remarkable fusion of scientific progress and urban planning. The decision to construct the secret city of Los Alamos as part of the Manhattan Project was deeply rooted in the tumultuous historical context of World War II. With the rise of Nazi Germany and its pursuit of nuclear weapons, fears of an Axis power victory and the potential devastation wrought by these weapons drove the United States to initiate a covert research endeavor. The Manhattan Project was born out of the urgent need to develop nuclear capabilities ahead of the Axis forces. Led by scientists like Oppenheimer, the project aimed to harness the potential of nuclear fission for military applications, ultimately leading to the creation of the atomic bomb. The historical imperative of defeating a common enemy and preventing the Axis powers from gaining a nuclear advantage propelled the construction of Los Alamos. For Project Y, the selection of the site was marked by an intricate fusion of strategic considerations and geographical attributes. Situated amidst the rugged terrain of New Mexico's mountain ranges, the city's location was meticulously chosen for its intrinsic isolation and security. The natural undulations of the terrain acted as a natural veil, and it afforded a remarkable shield against unwanted scrutiny. The designers adeptly harnessed this geographical advantage, seamlessly integrating structures into the rocky hills and canyons, orchestrating a harmonious unity between the town and its natural environment. Further fortified by limited accessibility and a sparse population, an intricate web of safeguarding layers culminated into a sanctuary created for pioneering research. General Groves's stipulated criteria were stringent, demanding a moderate climate conducive for year-round activities, remote inland positioning to minimize vulnerability, and a sparse population density to enhance security. Accessibility via road and railway was also imperative. A delicate balance was sought, ensuring that the constructed environment was still pleasing for the scientists who were humorously labeled as prima donnas by Groves himself. Oppenheimer's familiarity with the New Mexico region garnered through his outdoor adventures and backpacking expeditions led him to this place. Plateau range. This region elegantly fulfilled all requisites. Notably, the site previously housed a ranch school catering to affluent families owned by Ashley Pond. This establishment aligned with Pond's vision to foster a unique haven. Government officials later visited Pond's ranch, later causing the school to shut down. Construction commenced swiftly with bulldozers reshaping the terrain and the materials being transported up the cliffside paths to erect new buildings. Amidst this flurry, Los Alamos sought to maintain a semblance of normalcy. Scientists and their families arrived, discreetly fading away from public view, united in their understanding of the immense gravity of the project and its pivotal role in determining the outcome of the war. Leadership of the project resided in a repurposed set of homes of the formal ranch school. These clusters of residences came to be known as Bathtub Row, named for being the sole structures equipped with bathtubs. Meanwhile, the swiftness of construction resulted in other apartments that felt paper thin and furnaces that blazed excessively. Some residents recounted how their touch would cause the walls to sizzle. Deconstruction gave rise to concerns and several residents acknowledged that while the home's design was not inherently flawed, fire susceptibility was a pressing issue. Ponds at huts, or prefabricated semi-cylindrical structures, were a hallmark. Rapidly assembled, these huts served not only as homes, 
but they could be adapted into offices and labs. Their approach aligned with the city's ethos, optimizing limited resources and facilitating swift construction adjustments. Seamlessly intertwined resourcefulness, adaptability, and functionality reflected in Los Alamos's discreet yet efficient design philosophy. Utility infrastructures were limited, evidenced by a solitary wooden water tank for the entire town, which even froze during the winter of 1945. To better illustrate this concern, a fire in the machine shop located close to a building dedicated for plutonium purification resulted in near catastrophe, nearly depleting the water supply stored in this vulnerable wooden tank. Alamos was meticulously designed with functional zoning at its core, dedicating district areas to specific functions such as research, residential living, administration, and support facilities. The city streets were nameless, necessitating directions to be given relative to the water tower's location. Designated zones ensured not only accessibility of vital resources, but also nurtured collaboration amongst scientists. For instance, technical area sites, TA sites, were allocated with specific scientific disciplines with TA3 and TA18 concentrating on physics and chemistry respectively. Streamlined operations fostering interdisciplinary interaction. Los Alamos' expression depended on its infrastructure, which is why General Gross was looking for a site that had existing structures and infrastructures already laid out. The town's isolated location necessitated self-sufficiency, prompting creative solutions for waste disposal and energy generation. So for instance, liquid waste primarily from lab experiments were treated and disposed through the city's sewage system. Solid waste was sorted and collected with non-hazardous materials sent off-site for disposal and potentially reusable items were recycled. However, due to the focus on secrecy, some waste materials were actually buried on the site, contributing to future environmental cleanup efforts. Energy generation at Los Alamos primarily relied on diesel generators and steam boilers. The generators supplied electricity to power various facilities and experiments. Steam boilers provided heating for buildings as well as processed steam for experimental work. Limited by the scarcity of resources though, energy sources were practical and self-contained, adapted to meet the specific needs of the research being conducted within this town. Now, I'm sure you're curious, what was the day-to-day -day experience like? During its most active period, Los Alamos harbored a population ranging from 6,000 to 8,000 residences, including scientists, support staff, and military personnel, along with their families. This is about 1,500 to 2,000 families, with living arrangements predominantly centered in the Quonset huts. The inclusion of families within this unique community was a deliberate endeavor to cultivate a semblance of normalcy amid the extraordinary circumstances orchestrated by the Manhattan Project. Central communal living spaces like Fuller Lodge, which was the dining hall, also played an essential role in creating this normalcy. The town had a singular point of entry requiring rigorous pass issuance. An aura of confidentiality extended to mail censorship, where a lot of the outgoing correspondence was closely scrutinized, resulting in withholding and returning certain letters, underscoring the sensitivity of the endeavor. To the outside world, Los Alamos remained entirely unknown and even an enigma. Mailing addresses, birth certificates, and even driver's license were tainted with false information. The city's mailing address was designated as P.O. Box 1663 in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Birth certificates recorded the birthplace as Box 1663, Andoval County, while driver's licenses bore nameless alphanumeric identifiers. Such measures ensured that Los Alamos remained concealed, the very existence a well-guarded military secret. Materials transported to the site were discreetly stamped with USED, the United States Engineering District, a cryptic marker of their origins. So 
I'm sure you guessed it, secrecy was paramount, driving the designers to employ clever camouflaging techniques. Construction was strategically staggered to reduce attention while buildings were meticulously crafted and meshed seamlessly with its natural surroundings. Earth tones and roof designs were used to minimize visibility at a distance. A diverse range of materials from different sources also obscured the true purpose and scale of the project. Even the thoughtful placement of trees and vegetation further shielded the country from aerial scrutiny, maintaining its covert operations. Granted, the wartime setting brought resource shortages and rationings, adding complexity to the initial phase of construction. Innovative solutions arose like recycling materials and utilizing prefabricated structures like the Quonset huts. Arch engineers displayed a remarkable resourcefulness, adapting their designs to work under these constraints. Remarkably, the veil of secrecy surrounding Los Alamos was so tightly maintained that even presidents and high-ranking officials were forbidden from uttering the words Los Alamos. The exact cost of constructing Los Alamos remained shrouded in secrecy due to the confidential nature of the Manhattan Project even to this day. Estimates vary widely with figures reaching upwards of $845 million in today's currency. That was approximately $74 million back then. And it depends on the inclusion of indirect costs and development expenses. Much of the funding for the project was also allocated under various code names, making it kind of difficult to discern the true financial implications. But just for reference, the total Manhattan project was estimated to be around $21 billion in today's currency. Los Alamos stood as a testament to the unprecedented length taken to safeguard classified information, encapsulating a world shrouded in codes, pseudonyms, and hidden identities. Oppenheimer's secret city Los Alamos stands as a testament to the convergence of scientific innovation and architectural ingenuity. While history is marked by the development of the atomic bomb, Los Alamos also serves as a reminder of humanity's ability to adapt to challenging circumstances, pushing the boundaries of architecture and urban planning to achieve unprecedented feats. If you liked this video, be sure to check out my Death of Malls video essay right here.